next problem that will work is this one, 3x, let me move this down, 3x plus y equals 25, or pardon me, 3x plus y equals 5. We could work this, but we'd get some pretty big numbers and they'd be hard to graph on a single sheet of paper, so we'll work the, the, uh, this one. It should give us a, a better graph to work with. Remember when we, <clears throat> we're going to want to put this in proper form, meaning that we'll want y by itself on one side of the equal sign, which means that we're going to have to move this 3x to the other side of the equal sign. To do that, we'll subtract 3x from this side. And we'll have to subtract 3x from the other side of the equal sign. What we do to one side, we do to the other. So 3x minus 3x is going to give us 0. So we're going to end up with just a y on this side of the equal sign. And then we have our 5 minus 3x. And again, this isn't quite this is the correct answer, but it's not quite the proper form. We like to have our x term first followed by the whole number. So the proper form would be y equals a minus 3x plus 5. We just switch these around. So now we have our formula in proper form, and we can start to generate some ordered pairs. And we do that again by building a table. And we're going to assume values for x and generate values for y. And we'll start always with 0. I mean, there's no rule that says you have to start with 0, but I always do. Uh, I always do a couple of positive numbers when I generate ordered pairs and then a couple of negative numbers. Start with 0, a couple of positive, and a couple of negative. And we'll show you why it's important to do both in a, in a little bit, in an, another lesson. So let's start with 0. If x equals 0, then we have a minus 3 times 0, which is 0. And, y, and so y is just going to equal a plus 5. What we're doing is we're solving this equation when x equals 0. So to do it longhand, we would write 3, or y equals a minus 3 times 0, plus 5, and 3 times a negative, or negative 3 times 0 is 0, plus 5 is just 5. That's how we got the 5. Let's try it with 1. We'd have minus 3 times 1 plus 5. A minus 3 times 1 is a minus 3. Minus 3 plus 5 is a plus 2. So our ordered pair would be 1 and 2. And we'll try it now with 2. So we'd have a minus 3 times 2 is a minus 6 plus 5. Minus 6 plus 5 is a minus 1. Now let's try it with some negative numbers. A negative 1. A negative 1 times a negative 3 is a positive 3. Two negatives multiplied together give us positive. So we'd have a positive 3 plus 5 is going to be 8. And if we had a negative 2 here, we'd have a negative 2 times a negative 3 is a positive 6, and 6 and 5 is 11. So I've generated five ordered pairs. You can generate more if you like. Um, and you don't have, always have to use what I use, 0, 1, 2. You can use larger numbers, but usually by keeping your x's small numbers, you generate smaller y's, and it's easier to, to build your graph. <clears throat> so let's, let's graph this one. Get a grease, new piece of graph paper here. We're going to generate our coordinate system by drawing two axes. We'll draw a horizontal axis, which will be our x-axis, and we'll draw a vertical axis, which will be our y-axis. 
And you can, you'll want to use graph paper when you do this. Where the graph, where the axes cross, that's our zero. And then we can count off in a positive direction on the x. The, the horizontal is an x-axis. If we go to the right, we're positive, so this would be a positive x. And if we go to the left from the zero on the x, we have a negative x. As we go above the zero on the vertical axis, we're in a plus y. This is the y-axis. And below, a negative y. And we mark off equally spaced grid marks on our axes. So I'm using each of these little grids as a half a unit, so this would be a whole unit, this would be another whole unit, another whole unit, and I'd mark my grid off like this. This is a positive one, two, three, four, and five. And I'll go up here the same way, I'm going up on the Y, so I'm going in a positive direction. So this is a positive one, two, three, four, and five. Now I'm back to the X axis, but instead of going to the right, I'm going to go to the left in a negative direction. So my values are going to be negative. So I'm going to have a negative one here, a negative two, negative three, negative 4, and a negative 5. Again, down on the Y is negative, so I'll mark off my grid, but I'm in negative territory, so these will all be negative ones, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Now, I'm going to write the ordered pairs that we generated on this paper so that you can see them as I graph them. The ordered pairs we said when x was 0, y was 5. And we said when x was 1, y was 2. And when x is 2, y was a negative 1. And when x is a negative 1, y was 8. And x was a negative 2, y was 11. So this will be a good one to show you why we want to keep our numbers low when we graph because we get up to 11 here which is going to be a hard one to show you but we'll do it all right now to graph our ordered pairs remember the first number is our x value the second number is our y value x first y second so our first number is x is 0 and y is 5 so we find on the x axis our 0 which is right here and on our y-axis, 5, which is up here. So this is the point for 0, 5, right here on the axis. Now our x is 1, which is here. And our y is 2, 1, 2, right here. So this is our second point, and that point is y is 1 and x is is 2. And then our next point is 2 and a minus 1. x is going to be 2. y is going to be a minus 1. So find x equals 2. Here's 1, 2. y equals a minus 1, which is down here. This is our second, or our third point, 2 minus 1. Our next one is x equals a minus 1, which is here, and our y is 8. Well, we don't have enough units here. We're going to add some units to our graph. So this is going to be 6, 7, 8. 6, 7, and 8. So again, back here, our, y, our x is a minus 1. Here's a minus 1 on the x-axis, and 8 on the y would be up here. So this is a minus 1 and an 8. And our next one 
is a minus two, which is here, and 11, we're gonna have to add a piece of paper. This is why you wanna keep your numbers small. It just makes it difficult to graph these large numbers on a single sheet of paper. And most of the book problems are, are designed so that you can graph them on a single sheet of paper. But I'll just extend this just to show you here that you can, just because you write, run out of paper doesn't mean you can't continue. So if this is a minus eight, this is a minus nine, this would be a minus 10, this would be a minus 11. So a minus two on the, on the X would be over here and a minus 11 would be way up here. Let's see, right here. So this is a minus two and 11. Notice that I can draw a line that connects all of these points and the line would look like this. Now I want to show you, bef before we stop here today, a little uh, uh, something about all of the graphs that we've done today. We, when we generated our ordered pairs and we plotted all of our lines today, we got and connected the dots, the ordered pairs, we always got a straight line. An equation that looks like this, like the one we just did, y equals a minus 3x plus 5. An equation like that will generate a set of ordered pairs that lie in a straight line. An equation that looks like this will generate a set of ordered pairs that lie in a straight line. Our next lesson we're going to look at ordered pairs that don't lie in a straight line. So that's it for lesson two.